All right, well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and we are going to be doing a video that I have been wanting to do for some time now, and that is, well, I guess you can say a review to end all reviews, basically. No, I'm just joking. I'm probably just going to do this for Lexus because, well, there is a large following for Lexus, and um, I didn't really mean for that to happen, but it just kind of did. And I have basically reviewed every Lexus, almost every Lexus on the channel, new or old. And here I'm just going to be talking about all the models basically. And hopefully this will be like a quick reference guide for most people. I'm doing Lexus mainly because like I mentioned, there's a large fan base for Lexus on this channel. And so because of that, I have driven almost every Lexus. Uh, I would actually like to do this type of video for basically all the manufacturers, but unfortunately I don't have access to like all the cars like that. So I can't really do that. Lexus is the one manufacturer where I can kind of make a video like this. So I just want to start out and go through all of these different categories, right? Give you a brief explanation of which vehicles I believe are to be the best and kind of give you a rundown. So let's, I guess, start with my most favorite category or one of my most favorite categories, and that is the sedan. So, so basically everything that you see here is great except for the LS hybrid. So starting at the top, the IS. So IS. I have driven the 2014 to 2020 generation flawless. I have not driven the 2021. However, I know for a fact that it is going to be superior to that previous generation. They made those subtle, small Kaizen tweaks and it's got a better chassis, better suspension. It's gonna be amazing. So an IS 350F Sport, definitely worth the money. I spec'd out a all wheel drive IS 350F Sport, it came out to be around $46, $47,000. Not bad at all. So something to look into. The ES, definitely a very plush riding vehicle. What they've done for this generation, you know, it started basically in 2019, that's when this model year came out, this, this body style. And they basically sacrificed all the handling and they focused solely on ride. And because of that, it almost exceeds the LS now. Like there's really no point in really getting an LS anymore because the ES is really that good. Even the interior somewhat mimics the LS. So it's just a fantastic car. No, it's obviously not some ditto copy of an LS, but like it's got a lot of the vibes. I mean, it starts at 40 grand, but let me tell you something. You get one of the luxury models or, or above that, the ultra luxury trims, the quietness, the smoothness of these vehicles is unmatched. I would not recommend getting the F Sport version of the ES, but the regular version and the hybrid version is amazing. Now I understand that in places like Europe, you only get the, the hybrid option and, and you are getting a fantastic vehicle here. So don't worry about that. In some cases, I think the hybrid is actually even superior to the ES. They did come out with an all-wheel drive. I have not driven that, but that only comes in a regular four-cylinder, basically straight out of the Camry, and that's inappropriate. I would not get the all-wheel drive ES either. If you want a all-wheel drive ES vehicle, just get an all-wheel drive Camry instead, or an all-wheel drive Avalon with the four-cylinder. So you're better off with that, but incredible vehicle. So quiet, so comfortable, and such a large vehicle. Only thing that sucks about the ES is that the rear seats don't fold down. That's the only real complaint I have, but other than that, fantastic vehicles, man. So the LS, I love the interior of the LS. It is top tier, my most favorite interior I think I've ever been in. The LS interior, the LC500 interior, and the S-Class interior, my top three favorite interiors of all time, really substantial, really a high quality, wonderfully crafted things to behold by. We'll see the LS for me, I think has to be on the top, the regular LS model that is not the F Sport model, just the regular LS models. So I love that, but I will say if I'm gonna buy one driving wise, the F Sport I think was my most favorite choice uh, driving wise. The suspension and everything I think was calibrated and tuned, I think, perfectly in the F Sport. In the regular LS and definitely in the hybrid models with the air suspension, it feels weird. I don't know. It just I, I, I was not a fan of it. There was just something wrong with it. There was like this disconnect and this lack of confidence basically that I felt. So I'm gonna skip the regular LS models and the hybrid model for sure because the hybrid was so damn loud. Like the drivetrain, that B6 drivetrain, man, coupled with that hybrid, the hybrid made so much noise. There was this 
weird fake engine noise that came on. It was so loud and obnoxious. I hated it. So the LS Hybrid is a fail. Unlike the ES Hybrid, the ES Hybrid is so smooth. You hardly even hear it. You hear nothing basically. So it is really a luscious experience, how a Lexus should be. No idea why the LS Hybrid is so noisy, but speaking of noise, I've experienced wind noise in both the Hybrid and the regular LS models. However, the F Sport, strangely enough, did not have any wind noise. All three of these vehicles I tested were brand new 2020 model years. Uh, for 2021, the LS did get revised, but I have not tried that. I have not seen the new 2021 LS and I don't know, the interior is kind of weird. They went to a more touchscreen thing. And I don't know, I, I agree with you guys. I do like the 2020 LS more than the 2021. So there's something to keep in mind, but I wanna go back to the IS real quick. So another thing I forgot to mention is the IS 500. I did a whole another separate video about that. IS 500 is amazing. It will only come in rear wheel drive, but it will be incredible. It's probably gonna be north of $65,000 though. Um, so it's going to be out of most people's price range, but the IS 350F Sport, rest assured, is incredible. One of the best bank banks for the buck out there. And I actually do think the rear seats fold down in the IS, unlike the ES, which is very strange since this is a rear-wheel drive platform. So something to keep in mind. Okay, let's move on to the most popular segment. Okay, SUVs. Now this whole top row right here, disregard it. All garbage, not worth your time. It's not garbage, but it's just like when you can pay a little bit more money and then get this, this just becomes totally irrelevant because the quality jump between these vehicles to an RX is night and day. Like the RX and the ES, these are the two vehicles in the Lexus lineup that I recommend the most. You get the most bang for the buck. The ES has a six figure quality to it inside, out and driving wise. The RX also similarly has a great feel, like a near six figure driving experience. It is so smooth and so quiet, so substantial. And that V6 is something to behold. Even compared to the German competition, that V6 is a massive blessing. It just sounds good. It pulls well. It's not the most dynamic or whatever, but here's the thing though. The dynamics that you find in something like a German vehicle, like a BMW, I mean, what are you gonna exactly do with that? Extra level of dynamics, I don't know. It's really gone to waste. I would rather have the comfort, the quietness, and the substantial feel of the RX. Now, the hybrid is also worth getting. The RX and the ES hybrids are the best hybrids. They are the smoothest. They are, they don't have like the weirdness that I felt in both the NX300H and in the LS 500H. So those were failures to me. No idea what's wrong with that. I have driven a UX. Again, another waste of your time. Don't bother. Yeah, none of these cars are really worth your time. And the interior quality in these vehicles are nowhere near the level of the RX either. I love the interior on the RX. Again, an excellent choice. I would only go with a hybrid if you think you drive a lot and you can kind of sort of get the extra MPG benefits, but for the most part, RX 350, baby. No app sport needed, just the regular car. Load it up with the options you need, like Mark Levinson, and you are good to go. It's probably gonna be about 50 grand. Hopefully you can get some incentives on it though, but incredible machine, love the RX. And I just wanna quickly discuss something before we continue on. So there's this common misconception with these Lexus vehicles that um, they are only like, cruiser type vehicles and they're not worth it to like enthusiasts or whatever honestly like vehicles like the is i mean dude i enjoy driving this more than some of the german cars let me tell you something i mean in my opinion some of the german cars are like overhyped i mean i would take something like an rx over like a glc mercedes or like an x3 bmw or an audi q5 i would definitely choose this is a far superior vehicle to those and it's just Somehow the media, the journalists, they do a terrible job painting a picture in people's head on what these vehicles are truly like. Their real world demeanor is amazing. I don't like fanboyism. I said this multiple times, but this is the truth. I mean, these cars are incredible as street cars, especially for the American roads. I find these to be a great pleasure and their interior qualities, the way they age is second to none. I've driven many Lexus products with hundreds of thousands of miles on it, 200,000 miles on it, and they age flawlessly. Now talking about the GX and LX, unfortunately I have not driven the absolute brand new ones, but I've driven 
relatively new ones. And I can say this, these cars, especially the GX, you should look into. It's a V8, okay? This is going away, basically, these dinosaur-type cars. Take advantage of them while you can. I will say the LX is just too much money, $86,000 starting. Yeah, it's just catastrophic amounts of money, man. Normal people just cannot afford this. So I would just, it's a badass ride. I know it's going to be a tank. I've driven the older ones. It's amazing, but yeah, it's just too much money. So I would focus more in on this GX. Get this while you can. They're really selling out of these, I've noticed. Like my local Lexus dealerships, they don't really hold on to these long. So when Lexus announced that they are going to stop producing V8s, the demand for these things went through the roof. So get these while you can. I will say it's not as easy to get in and out of these types of vehicles compared to the RX. Like it's a more car based vehicle. So you got to, you know, just slide your tush in and out. You can't really do that with the GX and the LX. You really got to get on that step ladder and do all the other miscellaneous things. Fuel economy sucks though. I would recommend this to the type of people who hardly drive like myself and you're not going to put a lot of miles on this. Fuel economy is not a big deal to you. That's perfect for you because you're also going to enjoy great resale value with both the GX and the LX. So take advantage of that. Now the coupes, everything you see here is fantastic except for the LC hybrid. This is basically the exact same drivetrain you find in the LS 500H. So I'll get to that last. Okay, RC, RC 350F Sport, very similar to the IS 350F Sport, a great driving experience, absolutely get it, definitely worth the cash. They do make these four-cylinder offerings and detuned V6s, don't do that. Uh, the four-cylinder, not worth it, both in the IS and the RC, skip it. If you're going to buy this, get the RC 350 and get it with the F Sport. It does make a difference, you should get it and you will enjoy it. Fantastic vehicle. RCF, another vehicle, definitely get it. See if you can negotiate a discount on it though. Try your best to do that. But for the most part, this is a great vehicle. Now you're looking at the LC and you're like, well, what's the difference? They both use the exact same engines. Is this a scam? Absolutely not. This is the vehicle I personally daily drive. It's making me poor, but I do daily drive this car. I am currently leasing this car and it has been the greatest modern day driving experience I have ever had ever. So What's the difference then? Chassis on this is far superior, okay? The ride, everything about this, like I mentioned, something like an ES has like a $100,000 quality to it. The LC has a legitimate quarter million dollar quality to it rolling down the road. The RCF just can't grasp that. It's a complicated thing. I don't really want to go into it, but the engine, everything, it's tuned completely differently. The 10 speed automatic, everything so much crispier, so much more immediate. And the exhaust on this thing, dude, is just next level. It sounds nothing like the RCF. This will shatter people's eardrums. It is so loud, especially on those downshifts. RCF is a lot more muffled. In fact, I would say that the RCF is not actually far off from the RC 350 F Sport stock anyway. You get you do get a more burly V8, of course, but I will say driving dynamics, all that stuff, not too far off from the RC 350 F Sport. So something to keep in mind. Uh, is it worth it? Yeah, it's worth it, but I will say put an NVIDIA exhaust on the RCF. It needs an exhaust. I hate saying that, but you're going to have to get it with this vehicle if you want to really open it up. But another reason why you're going to want an RCF over the LC is, be, is due to the amount of space that this has. The LC is physically larger, but this is a completely worthless and useless vehicle. There is no rear legroom space. There is zero trunk space. There's not even any interior cubbies, really. Just a worthless thing as a car, basically. All it is is a selfish driving experience for you and like one other person, but you can't really carry anything with you. So... RCF, I can legitimately sit behind myself. The trunk is vastly larger than the LC. It's like a sedan trunk, basically. A far more practical car, far cheaper car. Still got an amazing V8. Doesn't drive as well as the LC, but it is technically more track capable. It's got like oil coolers and all this other unnecessary shit you're never going to use, but uh, it's got it, basically. LC is a vehicle that is rather misunderstood by both owners enthusiasts and a, and for sure journalists all they do is call it a all they do is call it a grand touring car and that couldn't be far, further from the truth 
the LC just is the perfect street car. Like that near 500 horsepower that these two cars have, it is the most usable near 500 horsepower because it's naturally aspirated. The power comes on perfectly. It sounds perfectly. And this car feels special doing 35 miles an hour the same way it feels special doing 135 miles an hour. That's the magic. That's the secret sauce behind the LC that nobody really understands. It really does transcend specs. I mean, I prefer this stuff to like the ridiculous twin turbo V8s from Germany. I mean, they're just so unusable and they sound like crap because they're twin turbo charged. The sound is muffled. RCF and the LC, they're all naturally aspirated. You get a very organic tone to it. LC hybrid. Okay. Uh, I have not driven one, but a total waste of time. The reason why you should get an LC is because it's a V8, not because hybrid who the hell even does that i haven't even seen these at any dealerships honestly and if it has the same exact drivetrain as the ls 500h which it does it'll probably share the exact same characteristics which i did not like it's going to be loud it's going to be up obtrusive and it's just going to be annoying and it's just going to defeat the purpose of the lc and there's no real mpg gains either like with the ls 500h dude like i had to fill it up after a week cost me 40 bucks it was just like a regular gasoline powered car like my mpg wasn't even that great so completely worthless the LC, lc hybrid and the ls 500h hybrid now lc convertible amazing also look into this but i will say the reason why i don't like it is because it's a cloth top if it was a hard top i'd be all over it i have driven this car the 2021 i did do a review on this and what you have to understand between the lc cars is 2018 they're cheap for a reason they ride like shit apparently so and the transmission is nowhere near as well, as good as the 2019s and up. But 2021, the biggest change that they made is the ride quality. It rides like butter. So massively different there. And I think they upgraded the brakes as well. So the brakes actually, um, they're smoother and they produce less dust as well, less brake dust. So something to keep in mind with the 2021 LCs uh, compared to like the 2020s and 2019s. But yeah, 2021 is good. Some people say it's too soft. I, I think it rides amazing. I, I really like it, honestly. Yeah, hybrids, we talked about this. So RX and ES hybrid, that's the only two vehicles you should look into. All this, th these four right here, total garbage, throw it out the window. You don't need to worry about this. So conclusions, get an IS 350F Sport. That's the best trim level. ES 350 or hybrid, doesn't matter. Uh, try to get them in the luxury or ultra luxury trims. You get the double pane glass, it's even quieter. It's buttery smooth, both these cars. Skip the F-Sport and skip the four cylinder all wheel drive. You want all wheel drive, just go get the Camry. But the thing that sucks is the rear seats don't fold down. So that's what I don't like about the ES. LS, if you're gonna get it, just get the F-Sport. That's the only model I can recommend. SUV is just getting the RX350 at Mark Levinson and shut up or get the GX with the V8, that's also amazing. Coupes, lease an LC if you can, it's the greatest driving experience I've ever had. I've driven the AMG GT, I've driven Jaguar F-Types, I've driven the Shelby GT500, I've even driven, yeah, some of those high horsepower stuff. What else did I drive? 911s, I prefer the LC to all these cars, baby. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie, That's I'm not just hyping it up, I'm not some fanboy, objectively, this is my most favorite driving experience. Um, yeah, and if you want to hear the engine even more and get the convertible, but make sure you have a garage that you can park it inside of because you have to protect that top. So it's something to keep in mind, but you can hear the engine even more with the top down. It is very impressive. Love it, man. So that's kind of my look at all these Lexus cars. IS500, that's an RV vehicle to look into, should be coming out this fall. But yeah, I mean, that's just going to be around $65,000, but if you can afford it get it but just keep in mind it's only rear wheel drive and uh, isf may be coming with the twin turbo v8 but who really knows but that's kind of my look at all the lexus vehicles there's some concept cars here you know lf1 limitless did a video on that but yeah let me know your thoughts let me know if this helped and uh yeah i just want to make this quick video unfortunately i can't do this for other manufacturers because i haven't driven like the entire lineup like i have with the lexus basically so that's why I can't do it with those other cars. But hopefully you found value with this. I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care and goodbye.